Hello and welcome to another episode of Code Time. My name is Pete Medina and today we're going to look at how to properly format an HTML tag. So in the last video, you wrote some HTML using the H1 and paragraph tags. I have that file open right here. But there's a lot more to an HTML file than that. So this doesn't really tell the browser anything about our standard of HTML or the page title or what language is being written in or anything else. So let's create a properly formatted HTML file. All right, so I'm going to delete everything in here. I'm just gonna press Command A to select all and then backspace. All right, so now we have a blank file again. Now let's get started by telling the browser that this is in fact an HTML file using the latest standard. So if you remember, all HTML tags start with a less than symbol. So I'm going to do a less than. Only this time I'm going to press exclamation point and then write doc type. Now this is telling the browser what type of document this entire file is. So we're gonna do exclamation point doc type space HTML and then greater than. Every HTML file in the world will start with this doc type. So it's all part of the standard and all we're doing is we're telling the browser we're using HTML. All right, let's create a new line here. And now we're going to create an opening HTML tag. So I'm going to do a less than HTML. Only instead of closing it, I'm going to add what's called an attribute. And you'll be getting into attributes a lot, especially as we transition into CSS. But this attribute is going to tell the browser what language this website is being written in. So I'm going to press space and I'm going to write L-A-N-G. Notice the Sublime Text color codes attributes in this green color to help them stand out from the tag. All right, so I'm gonna do L-A-N-G equals, and then I'm going to press the double quotes. And notice when I do that, Sublime Text automatically inserts an ending quote right here. So we have two of them and the cursors in between. And I'm going to write E-N for English. And if I press the double quote again, it'll sort of ignore it and jump to the end. And then I'm going to do greater than. So what this does is this starts the HTML and it tells the browser I'm using English is the, is the language I'm writing this web page in. If I'm doing this in Spanish, it would be ES for Espanol, or I could do FR for French or TH for Thai, but we're gonna jump back to EN for English. And all that does is it lets the browser know which kind of fonts or which kind of characters to load. All right, so let's make a new line right here. And we're going to create what's called a head tag. Now, head tags don't display any content on screen, but they are used by the browser to help understand more of uh, what's inside of this HTML document. So I'm gonna do less than, and I'm gonna do head. All right, now I'm gonna create a new line here, and I'm going to create what's called a title tag. So I'm going to do a less than, title, greater than, and this is going to give my page a title. This is what appears on, say, the browser tab or on search engine results. So I'm going to name this one Code Time Demo. And just like everything else we've been doing so far, I'm going to close it. So uh, less than symbol and then forward slash and Sublime Text will automatically close that out for me. All right, so, so far we have our doc type. We're telling the browser this is HTML. We have our opening HTML tag. That's telling the browser this is the start of all of the HTML and it's being written in English. Now we have our head, which is starting to uh, create this uh, collection of information for the browser. And the first thing we do is we're telling it the title of our page here is Code Time Demo. But now we need to tell it which sort of fonts to load or which kind of character sets to load. And that's a little bit different than the language attribute. And you'll see right now. So I'm going to create a new tag called a meta tag. So I'm going to do less than meta. And then I'm going to do char set. This is our character set. It's telling it what, uh, what font standard to load. And it's going to be equals uppercase UTF eight. That's the dominant character standard on the web. And we're going to do another uh, quote here and then close that out. So all we're doing is now we're telling it load this font standard. It's very technical, but it lets the computer create this unified set of characters across browsers and devices. All right, so let's go ahead and close off this head now. And we're going to create a new tag called the body tag. All right, so the head is invisible to us when we're viewing a web page. It's just used by the browser, but the body tag is the meat of the website. It's where the body of our content lives. So let's do body 
and put that little uh, greater than symbol here. And let's put our hello world message back. So I'm going to do lesson h1. All right, I'm going to create a new line here and I'm going to write hello world and then a new line and close it out. And notice the sublime text automatically indented it back. And let's create a paragraph and do the same thing, new line and put I'm writing some HTML. So fun. All right, and let's close that off. And now let's close off our body tag. So I'm gonna create a new line here and I'm going to do forward slash. And now let's close off our HTML tag. Same thing, only this time we have to backtrack it one. All right, so this, let's see, let's save it. And this is a properly formatted HTML document. And let's walk through everything again, just for uh, extra clarity here. So the doc type, has no closing tag, you'll see there's none down here. And the doc type, what it does is it tells the browser, this is an HTML document. So now it knows, okay, I'm gonna start treating it as HTML, I'm gonna load all the appropriate stuff I need on my technical side here. And then we're starting the HTML with this HTML tag here. So we're saying everything nested in here is HTML. And we're creating our head section. And the head contains a bunch of information for the browser on what, what kind of content is in here. This is a very small one right now. We just have a title and our character set. That's about as basic as it comes. The title is the title of the page and we'll see that when we load it in the browser. And then the character set or char set meta tag is telling the browser load this standard for fonts. So that's all that's, that is right there. And now we're closing our head. So this is the end of all that information. Then we're creating a body tag and we're telling the browser that everything nested inside of this body tag here is the meat of our page. It's the main content. So it's a heading and a paragraph. All right, and then we close that off and then we close off the HTML. And that's it. This is our standard HTML page. Let's uh, save it and jump back to our browser. This is the old stuff we did in the last episode, but let's refresh it. And there we go. Notice now that the title right here on this tab says code time demo. So the browser is getting that from that title tag we created. And then we have our hello world h1 and our paragraph. Let's jump back over here and instead of code time demo, let's just write uh, learning HTML as our title. And save that and jump back here and refresh. And there we go, that title changed. So congratulations, you've now just created a properly formatted HTML um, file. And you might be wondering, hey, how come it worked last time in the last episode, even though I didn't have any of this? Well, browsers are smart enough to make sense of, you know, just tags by themselves. It knows, you know, it's the file name is .html and we have some tags in here that are HTML tags. So it does its best to make sense of it, but it doesn't really have that much information. And, you know, it's really an unreliable way to work because in some cases, it might render it weird or it might not put the right kind of fonts on there and uh, search engines won't make sense of it, assistive devices won't make sense of it. Basically, nothing will understand it in the long term. So it's always good to create a properly formatted HTML file. Now, in the next episode, I'm going to show you a plugin for Sublime Text that gets all of this set up for you really fast. It's uh, one of my favorite plugins for it. And uh, that does it for this episode. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.